what is going on guys welcome to your 39th UDK tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be going over all the rest of these settings and buttons and brushes and we already went over the tools in the last tutorial so in this tutorial I just want to give you guys a better feeling of what all these other options do and I just want to make you guys a little more comfortable with the terrain editing window again I'm not going to be going over every little detail or else it will just take forever but like I said I just want to get you guys a little more comfortable with the terrain editing window so I'm just gonna go ahead and start at the top and work my way down so the very first checkbox is actually a checkbox that I don't use that often and I don't recommend that you guys use that often but basically the per tool checkbox is you can apply a strength setting to each individually currently selected tool and that way you can have like customized strength settings on each tool but like I said I really don't like to use it that often so just go ahead and leave it off by default now the soft select is if you notice the soft select probably is grayed out by default and that's because you can only use the soft select with this paint vertex tool so by default remember whenever we painted a vertex it goes ahead and it selects all the vertexes kind of evenly however if we go ahead and deselect those by control right dragon if we have soft select and we select vertex you notice that as it moves outward they kind of get gray and darker gray and that's because it selects the inner ones more harshly than it does the outer ones so that way whenever we hold control drag and drag that up you guys can see instead of making a nice steep plateau it kind of has a more gradient to it that it kind of gives you a more rolling hill rather than a nice steep edge so it's basically whenever you're looking for harsh edges go ahead and select this off whenever you're making nice rolling hills you usually want to use soft select so it kind of fades out on the edges so the other tool um, constrained don't worry about this constrained one right now it's kind of confusing and I don't use it that often so don't worry about constraint the angle however I do want to go over now by default angle is grayed out and by the way anything anytime anything is grayed out in the UDK it basically means you have the wrong tool selected for the job so this angle tool you can only use with this flatten tool right here so what this does is let me go ahead and bring everything down you know how before when I told you guys that what the flatten tool does is if you go ahead and paint it takes the rest of the terrain and it brings it up to that level well as you can see whenever it does bring it up to that level it creates a nice flat surface for the user to walk on so you know it's nice and even flat plane however you can select angle right here and let me go ahead and bring all this down and now what it does is whenever you paint it allows you to paint at an angle so it's not giving you that nice flat surface anymore it's creating more of an angle so um as you can see right here where I painted well that's basically what it does it allows you to flatten your map at an angle so this is useful whenever you're trying to create you know more texture on your mountain or something and you don't want to make you know a nice flat or else it'll look unnatural so that's all I have to say about that as far as Gump would say now this height right here remember when I told you guys that whenever you're using the flatten tool that it takes the terrain and whenever you first click it brings the terrain up to that height so basically it's bringing all the terrain up to the height where I first click on this mountain and if I were to click down here it would bring all the terrain down to that level well with height you can go ahead and give it an explicit height such as well I'm not even going to show you guys but it basically gives you a fixed height instead of you know having where you first click so well that's all I got to say about that you can explicitly input the height rather than just having a guess where you first click so I really don't use that one this much either but I guess I would show you guys what it means so the mirror tool what this does it gives you basically two brushes and it allows you to mirror along an axis so let me go ahead and edit along like the Y axis and now as you can see if I select my paint tool let me go ahead and give you guys a better view now what I can do is I can hold control and paint actually let me boost my strength up and as you can see instead of having one brush it's gonna mirror this along the y-axis and this is good for if you wanna make a map and you want both sides to be exactly the same or exactly symmetrical then you wanna use this 
along mirroring one axis and it's going to apply the same settings to each different side but generally you're going to want to select none so you just have a single brush that you can work with so that's basically all the settings now the rest of these view settings these are pretty much for your visual preference or some other things I'll just go over them real quick the terrain we only have one terrain object so it's kind of hard to demonstrate but whenever we have more than one terrain object we can select that object and then only that object is editable now the properties window if you go ahead and select that you can see that just like lighting your terrain has properties too so we're going to be going over these properties in an upcoming tutorial but for now I just want to show you guys that your terrain just like lighting has properties too now the view is pretty self explanatory if you uncheck that you can't see the terrain it's pretty much view and don't view your terrain now this lock right here is a little bit different whenever you have the lock selected and you try to edit your terrain you can't this pretty much means lock editing so if you know you have your terrain set up exactly how you want it and you don't want to mess with it make sure you lock it so you can't accidentally move anything around now this toggle wireframe on and off let me change my view a little bit this toggle wireframe on and off just basically shows or hides your wireframe so some people actually like working in this mode they think it's easier to see everything so you know this is just a personal preference whether you have it on and off now the wireframe color is just that you can go ahead and change the color to you know purple or something and there you go it's purple I kinda like it that nice hue blue so I'm gonna leave it at that now this recache terrain materials is basically think of it as like rebuilding your brushes whenever you make changes and they aren't visible go ahead and try recaching your terrain materials and then it's gonna make all your changes visible again so it pretty much means rebuild your terrain for the most part now this importing and exporting again remember I told you guys that we have like height maps that we can make in Photoshop that are basically just grayscales where white shows your terrain where to lift up and black shows your terrain where to press down we can go ahead and import them from other programs here so we're gonna be doing that in you know probably in like a hundred tutorials but for now we're just gonna stick with the basics that's how you do it also if you're working with a team and you either want to import one of their maps for your level or you just made a terrain and you want to export it to you know your manager so he can put all the pieces together this is where you would do it so anytime you want to import height maps or alpha maps or entire terrains or export your entire terrain this is where you do it now the brushes as you can see you can have flat big brushes by defaults or you know I'm not even gonna explain to you guys you can see this visually a lot better than I could ever explain it however I will move on to this section right here and this is tessellation now just think of tessellation as another word for detail you can go ahead and press increase right here to increase the detail of your map and add more polygons however I just wanna point out this the more detail you add to your map the longer it's gonna take the process and render and so don't just have the most detailed map you can because it's gonna look better however it's gonna take longer to load whenever you're playing your game so if you go ahead and decrease that it goes ahead and decreases the detail again if you decrease it a lot then you're gonna use lose a lot of your texture and it's gonna look like a game from like the 1900s so by default the tessellation it gives you by default is pretty good I usually like to bump it up one because I like high quality games so I like the tessellation right about there so the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is this layers panel right here and all these buttons under here are basically just shortcuts for anything you can do by right clicking in the layers panel so what we're going to be doing is in the upcoming tutorials I'm going to show you guys how to add new layers like a layer of trees and bushes and I'm gonna be like adding a new deco layer which is that's called but for now I'm gonna be kinda of chipping away at this as we go along so I don't wanna throw everything at you right now or just gonna confuse you guys but just remember this layers panel is basically everything in the UDK terrain is built using layers and this is where you edit all that stuff so now hopefully you guys have a little better understanding of the terrain editing window and what all these buttons do again we're basically going to be using these buttons as needed but I wanted to give you guys a quick overview to get you guys a little more comfortable with the interface so thank you guys for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time